joke yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I really hate political correctness. I mean, it kind of slaps you in the face during Christmas season, right? Holiday season, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm Jewish. I would way rather people tell me Merry Christmas than Happy Holidays. I hate it. Uh, well, I'm also a huge game show junkie, and I was watching Deal or No Deal on Christmas because I had it in HD and I wanted to see what the models would wear. <laughs> no, I know there was basketball on, right? But Deal on Christmas is the best thing in the world if you're a game show fan. They turn into Oprah, everybody gets ridiculous prizes. <laughs> so, they have the, uh, the whole set decked out for Christmas, right? It's all red and green, huge tree, they have carolers, and they're panning across, and off in the distance is one menorah, all by itself. <laughs> Hanukkah was already over. I mean, if you want to show it during the holiday, fine, but it just shows they have no idea what Hanukkah is beyond Jew Christmas. <laughs> and just to be really correct, the first contestant was Harriet Cohen. Her husband was Artie Cohen, the Jewish Santa, a double whammy. <laughs> and just for fun, she picked case 18 for the Hebrew letter Chai, that means life. <laughs> That's not by accident, right? That's a whole lot of Jew on Christmas. <laughs> so listen, on behalf of my people, take Christmas off, all right? Relax. We know it's important to you guys. It's that guy's birthday. <laughs> they say that, uh, that life really gives you second chances, and you're supposed to take them. Now, I was way too young to make jokes the first time OJ went on trial. Uh, guess what? I thought I should get into this one kind of early, so I watched the early proceedings, even though the real trial hasn't started yet. Um, it's like catching the last two spring training games, you guys know. Um, they had it on ESPN because before he was an actor and a murderer, OJ was famous because he was a football star. Uh, but the best part is that the lawyers clearly knew they were on TV, and they saw what the last one did for Cochran. It made him a household name, right? Everybody knew Johnny after that. So the lawyers really tried to go all law and order on this thing. They're, uh, one of them had a, a witness in the box, and he looks at him and he goes, so you could have called this man all day, and you decided not to. That's, that's right. You could have phoned him the entire day, and you decided against it? Yes. This man was available by phone for 24 hours and you neglected to contact him? The judge actually caught, like, stopped him and told him he sounded like an idiot. I, uh, I just like to picture him at home with like a rhyming dictionary trying to come up with this trial's version of Love Don't Fit. <laughs> the catchphrase for the trial, right? If he wasn't involved in the kidnapping, just give him a wrist slapping. <laughs> I mean, the rhymes with probable cause. <laughs> but you all know what OJ did, right? He, uh, he's accused of robbing and kidnapping some sports collectors that he says stole memorabilia from him. He can't be that stupid, right? OJ knows people follow him everywhere. We have like these celebrity bloggers and whatever. And it was in Vegas. I mean, shit, of course people follow OJ in Vegas. That's where he's gonna do something if anywhere, right? It's fucking Vegas. So here's what I think happened. OJ killed two people, remember that? <laughs> Finally, the guilt has to catch up with him. He can't sleep anymore. He just thinks I killed two people. I should go to jail at least, you know, for a little while. <laughs> so he has some friends set him up. He gives them the memorabilia, and they're all ready to go. They got the wires on, and they're all set. And uh, they're all ready to go. They got the wires on, and OJ just leans in and goes, "Hey, how many years do you think we're gonna get for this?" <laughs> I don't know, five years. Five years. I killed two people. <laughs> Let's go get the fucking guns. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not a great person, morally speaking, uh, but I've always tried to put a conscious effort to be nice to the elderly. I figure that way, in case there's a heaven, I can be like, yeah, but God, I was nice to old people. <laughs> but God's an old person. <laughs> the other day, I was, uh, I was driving home from a friend's house, I wanted a soda, so I stopped by like a convenience store, and I pull into the parking lot, and there's no spots, because a lot only have like 12 spaces. And this is, I promise, this is the first time I've ever done this. I parked in the handicap spot. Which, I, I know, you're all murmuring, I'm an asshole, it's okay. Uh, I'm also a hypocrite, because I've yelled at friends for doing it before, but I thought I'm gonna be like a minute tops, I just wanted to get a drink. So I pull in, I put the car in park, and just because my life is so perfectly scripted, cue the old woman coming in with the handicap <laughs> This is true. And what's worse is as she pulls in, a guy pulls out of a regular spot on the other side of the lot. So I, she parks in what's just about the furthest spot from the lot. From the store? Yeah, you can aw. It's it's sad. I ran the hell inside because I didn't want her to see it. <laughs> uh, so I go inside, I get my drink from the refrigerator, I wait behind like, you know, two people in line, whatever. It takes a minute. I pay, I go outside, the woman is barely out of her car. <laughs> She's hobbling across the parking 
nothing wrong with the cane. And she is the feeblest old woman you have ever seen in your life. Because it's not only the directing in my life that's so good, the casting is even better. So I try to make a quick fucking escape, right? I'm trying to run the hell back to my car, but before I can get there, this tough, like, biker-looking guy stops me with, like, a beard and a leather jacket and everything, and he just looks at me and he shakes his head and goes, you look real fucking handicapped. <laughs> what the fuck is that? My conscience rides a heart of it. <laughs> I thought I'd get a crit. <laughs> that was a Pinocchio joke. Four of you got that. <laughs> I have a lot of friends in the audience tonight. Um, yeah! We're apparently really proud of themselves. Uh, but as far as I know, I only actually have one family member. Uh, my sister Gabby. Yeah! Gabby! Gabby! And, she's Gabby! and she's seen me on stage for the first time, which is which is pretty cool. So I wanted to take these last couple minutes I have to make her feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> story about my sex life. Don't worry, Gabby, yeah, because I don't actually have sex in this story. That wouldn't be funny, unless you guys all watched or something. <laughs> but, uh, it's one of those where you come, like, painfully close and blow it. Every comedian says they don't understand women. I promise you, I am way worse. I've blown more sure things than anybody ever. <laughs> I, I had at least, like, six stories this pathetic. I went to a party. I knew this girl was going to be there. I got really hammered anyway, which is how most of these start. <laughs> and, and I get there. And I find her after a little while, and she's drunk too, and I'm thinking, shit, yes, this could be easy, right? Because it's not day rape if you're both drunk. <laughs> so we're talking, but she's drunk, she's running around, eventually she comes up and we're talking, and it was right after the first time I went on stage. Well, uh, I was really excited about it, so it was kind of all I talked about. And <laughs> this girl didn't come, so I kind of laid that part on pretty thick too. And yeah, we'll see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> so I laid that part out really big too, and eventually she looks at me, and I swear to God she says this, I'm sorry I didn't come to your show, I would totally pity fuck you right now. <laughs> I already told you I screwed this up, so I want you guys to think about exactly how I can screw this up. This is a layup, right? This is the easiest thing I've ever Well, I was really drunk, and I believe my response was, wow, that's a shot at my pride. <laughs> my, my pride? What, what fucking pride? I went home that night while I was in bed, you know, not having sex, uh, looking at a hole in my wall. I began to wonder exactly what I had to be proud of when I thought to be adult in sex. I don't know that I know another kind, alright? So that's, that's pretty stupid, right? You messed that up good. Uh, I made it way worse, because normal people could theoretically, you know, take enough drugs to do something like that. I, uh, while I was sitting in bed, I sent her a text message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't you, was it? <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> I sent her a text message that said something to the effect of, Sorry I had to bail, but you can pity fuck me another time. <laughs> is way worse than drunk dialing. <laughs> if you drunk dial somebody, and you talk to them and they're drunk too by morning, they forget what you said. <laughs> if you drunk text them, it still says the same thing. <laughs> she was freaked out. The point of the story is this, ladies, if you're going to approach me after the show, please make your intentions very obvious. <laughs> I can't even know. 